Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In the history of the Formula 1 World Championship, 190 drivers have finished on the podium if you exclude the races from the Indy 500 from 1950 to 1960, but over the years there have been some other drivers that have been close to doing so, but have never broken through. In total, 56 drivers have completed laps in the top 3 positions of a race, but never managed to do so on the last lap of a race, therefore never achieving a podium finish. Today, we'll be looking back at the 10 drivers who have completed the most laps in the top 3, but never finished on the podium, and also try to see if any of the races they did so, a podium finish was a realistic thought. Before getting into it though, if you enjoy the video, then please give it a like and share the video, and if you want to see more similar content, then you can subscribe to the channel. Now on to the top 10. To start off our list at number 10, we have Hector Rabak who spent 22 laps in a podium position. 18 of them were in second, and the other 4 in third, and all of them came at the 1981 Argentine Grand Prix. He was driving for Brabham in 1981, and qualified 6th for the race. He moved up early on, and on lap 11, he easily passed the Renault of Alain Prost under braking for third, and then four laps later, easily flew by the Williams of Carlos Reutemann for second. However, that was as far as he could get, as his teammate Nelson Piquet was well out in front, and too far ahead for Rabak to catch. It looked like Rabak would be able to cruise home to second, and therefore a podium, but it was not meant to be, as in lap 33, he came to stop when his car broke down. Unfortunately for Rabak, instead of being praised for running higher than he ever did in a Grand Prix, most seemed to just point out that he was not a top-line driver, and the performance showed just how dominant the Brabham car was at that race. Calling the race for the BBC, James Hunt said it's a sad thing, and that it makes a mockery of Grand Prix racing. While Rabak obviously never achieved the podium he likely would have that day, he did score three fourth-place finishes, all of them which came in 1981, making him one of five drivers that never finished on the podium to finish fourth three times. Coming in at ninth is Cristiano D'Amato, who spent 24 laps in the top three, 17 of which came in the lead, a single lap in second, and a further six laps in third. All but one of these came in the 2003 British Grand Prix, while his final lap in third came at the 2003 Japanese Grand Prix. In Japan, he moved up to 3rd for a single lap before making a pit stop, and ultimately finished 7th on the day, but the laps he spent at the front at Silverstone came at one of the most memorable races of the last 20 years. D'Amato qualified 6th, which would end up being his 2nd best qualifying of his career, but pitted to fill up on fuel during an early safety car in lap 6, which dropped him down to 16th. However, a few laps later came one of the most bizarre safety cars in the sport's history. A priest ran onto the hangar straight and had to be removed from the track. Pretty much the whole field pitted during this safety car apart from Damata and a few others that pitted under the first one, leaving Damata to lead Toyota's first laps with teammate Olivia Panis directly behind him in second. When the race got going again, Kimi Raikkonen almost immediately got by Panis for second and started pressuring Damata for the lead. D'Amato would not give in though, and held Raikkonen behind for 14 green flag laps, despite Raikkonen being under a second behind him basically the entire time. At this point, D'Amato made his next scheduled stop, which dropped him to 6th. He would eventually make it back up to 3rd for 5 laps while others pitted, but dropped to 7th after his final stop, which is where he ended up finishing. A podium was never really likely on the day, or really at any other point in his career, and he only made it up to the front through very unusual circumstances, but I do think Damata did still at least show he could perform under pressure, holding off the quicker McLaren of Raikkonen as long as he did. Two drivers tie for the next spot on the list, so we'll first take a look at Wilson Fittipaldi. The brother of two-time world champion Emerson never had quite the same success in Formula 1, but at the 1973 Monaco Grand Prix, he was running in third position for 26 laps, which makes up his entirety of laps run in the top three. He started ninth that day, but made it up to fifth by lap nine, but as the race went on, both Nicky Lauda and Jackie X, who were running immediately ahead of him, retired, which promoted Fittipaldi to third on lap 45. That's where he would stay until after 70 laps in the race where he had fuel pickup issues ending his day, in which it looked like he would have achieved a podium finished. Emerson did finish second that day, which would have made this the first time brothers shared the podium together, but they would have to wait another 25 years when the Schumacher brothers did so. 
Wilson did achieve a career-best fifth later in 1973 at the Nürburgring, but never again did he come close to achieving what he did that day in Monaco. The other driver with 26 laps in the top three is Roberto Mieres, and all these came in 1955 over three different races. In total, he led a single lap, spent six laps in second, and 16 in third, with the majority of these coming at his home race in Argentina. The race was one of the hottest in the history of Formula One, and Mieres and fellow countryman Juan Manuel Fangio were the only drivers that were able to make it through the whole race without having to share their car. Mieres started down in 16th, but climbed through the field with the help of others running into trouble, and eventually made it up to 3rd where he ran for a bet. Then Fangio, who was leading, pitted for fuel, which promoted Mieres to 2nd for a few laps, and after that, the new leader Harry Shell pitted to give up his car to Jean Beira due to exhaustion. This promoted Mieres to the lead for a single lap, but he then pitted and eventually had issues with his fuel pump and at a 10 minute pit stop. He would finish 5th on the day, but I think a podium would have been possible had he not run into reliability issues. Later in the year at the British Grand Prix, he briefly ran in 3rd for 2 laps while battling the Mercedes of Carl Kling, but Kling would pass him back, and Mieres ran most of the first half of the race in 4th before retiring with engine troubles. He also added a single lap in 3rd at the Monaco Grand Prix, but despite it being just that one lap, I think that this is the one that got away. He started down in 6th, and for much of the race he was in a battle with the Ferrari of Maurice Trintina. Trintina passed him early on, but Miri stayed right on him, and on lap 64, he finally passed Trintina back to move what into what was then third. Unfortunately for Mieres, though, almost immediately after his transmission failed and he had to retire from the race. Sterling Moss and Alberto Ascari, who were running first and second at that point, both retired before the end of the race, leaving Trentina to win a race which could have been Mieres's, but surely at least a podium. Obviously, that podium never came, but I think Mieres is one of the stronger, lesser-known drivers of the 1950s, and probably one of the better drivers to never finish on the podium in the sport's history. Coming in at number 6 is probably the most obscure name on this list and a driver that started only two World Championship Grand Prix, and that would be Dennis Poor. He ran 36 laps in the top three, all of which came in third at his first start at the 1952 British Grand Prix. He drove for Connaught and qualified eighth, but jumped up to third on the opening lap, and in the early stages of the race he had to hold off the Ferrari of Piero Taruffi. Surprisingly, he was able to do so until lap 15, when he had a brief spin causing him to relinquish the position to Truffy, but that would be the only place he would lose. Perhaps even more surprisingly, after he spun, he was still able to stay close enough to Truffy to be a threat, and on lap 27, one of the other Ferraris of Giuseppe Farina ran into troubles, which allowed Poor to move back up into third place. He stayed there to lap 49 when he had a long pit stop for fuel, but he only dropped down to 4th where he remained for the rest of the race. In the second half of the race, Poor looked to be in a state of exhaustion, and Autosport reported that a drink he received during his pit stop could have had traces of methanol in it. Regardless what happened, Poor was scheduled to compete in a Formula Libre race after the Grand Prix, but had to pull out of that because of how he was feeling. Perhaps had he had a quicker pit stop though, he could have had a fighting chance at a podium on the day, which would have put him in a small group of drivers to podium on debut, but nonetheless a fourth was still a fantastic result on the day. We have another lesser known driver at number 5, and that will be Alan Stacey who spent 48 laps in the top 3, all of which were in 3rd place at the 1960 Dutch Grand Prix. He qualified a career-best 8th for the race, but jumped to 4th on the opening lap, and started battling with Lotus teammate Innes Ireland for 3rd. The pair exchanged positions a few times over the opening stint of the race, and on lap 18, Sterling Moss, who was running in 2nd, suffered from a deflated tire, and had to come into the pits for a tire change. This promoted both Ireland and Stacey up a place with Ireland in 2nd and Stacey in 3rd, and from this point out, Ireland would hold the place ahead of Stacey. Things would remain pretty stagnant at this point at the front, and Stacey held third place until lap 58 when his transmission failed, forcing him to retire. Had he finished, holding on to third was probably likely, and this was the only time he ran near the front in his career. At the next race in Belgium, he was involved in an incident in which he was fatally injured, ending a promising young career too soon. Next at fourth, we have Paul DeResta who ran in the top three for a total of 60 laps. 
Overall, he led four laps, ran in second for 19 laps, and third for 37 laps across seven different races from 2011 to 2013, but most of these came from running long first in and staying out a few laps after the front runners had pitted. If I had to pick the two in which I think he was the closest to a podium finish, I think it would be the 2012 Singapore Grand Prix and the 2013 Bahrain Grand Prix. At Singapore, he was running third when a safety car came out in lap 33 and made a pit stop which dropped into fourth, and that's where he remained for the rest of the race, finishing just under four seconds off of Fernando Alonso for the final podium position. At 2013 Bahrain, he tried to do a two-stop race as opposed to the three that the majority of the front runners ran on. This allowed him to lead laps 11 to 13, and in lap 43 of 57, he moved up to third position when the Lotus of Romain Grosjean pitted. However, Grosjean, who now had tires that were six laps younger than Duresta's, was able to eat away at the gap and take the final podium position with just six laps to go, and Duresta ended up just over two seconds off of Grosjean at the end of the race. We have another driver associated with the Force Indy at number 3, and that is Adrian Sutil, who was in the top 3 for 83 laps in his career, with 11 of them being in the lead, 14 in 2nd, and 58 in 3rd, which came across 6 different races in 2009, 2010, and 2013. Pretty much all this came from running off strategy, as like in the case of Duresta, Force India commonly ran long in stints or tried to complete races in one fewer pit stop. At the 2013 Australian Grand Prix, this allowed him to lead 11 laps, including leading as late as lap 42 of the 58 lap race before ultimately finishing 7th. If I had to pick one in which he was probably closest to a podium, I would say the 2009 Italian Grand Prix. He qualified a career best second for the race and ran in the top 5 for most of the day, and was running 5th at the start of the last lap right behind the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen. However, Lewis Hamilton, who was running third, crashed in between the two Lesmos, promoting Sutil to fourth, and the safety car was brought out, so he wasn't able to attack Raikkonen, and ended up finishing half a second off the podium. At number two on the list, we have Mark Surer, who ran at the top three for 106 laps, with 28 of those being in second, and the other 78 in third, across four races in 1983 and 1985. I think in two of these a podium was realistic, and those would be the 1985 European and Australian Grand Prix. At the European Grand Prix at Brands Hatch, he started 7th, and climbed up to 2nd on lap 35, and that's where he would remain until after 62 laps when his turbo failed, forcing him to retire. In Australia, he ran in 3rd for most of the first half of the race, until he had engine troubles again. This was a race of very high attrition with just 8 cars finishing, and at the time of his retirement, he was over a minute ahead of Jacques Lafitte, who ended up finishing 2nd, so had he been able to keep the car pointed in the right direction, a 2nd place finish would probably have been likely. He also ran in 3rd for about half of the 1983 Monaco Grand Prix and in Arrows as well, before retiring after a collision with Derek Warwick who was trying to pass him for the position, but he was holding off some cars behind him that were quicker, so even had he managed to escape this, he very well could have lost the positions later. I wouldn't be surprised if many of you were able to guess who is number 1 now, and that would be Nico Hulkenberg. In total, he was in the top 3 for 176 laps, with 43 of them being in the lead, which is by far the most of anyone on this list, 53 laps in 2nd, and 80 in 3rd. These 176 laps came across 16 different races, and in the 11 years he has raced in Formula 1, 2018 and 2022 are the only years in which he has not been in the top 3 for at least a single lap. Obviously, some of these are just a few laps here and there from staying out long before making a pit stop, but Hulkenberg has famously had some close calls as well. It would take too long to go through them all, but the one that I personally feel got away the most was the 2012 Brazilian Grand Prix. He ran the majority of the race in the top three, including 30 laps in the lead of the wet-dry race that would decide the 2012 championship, and at the beginning of lap 55, he tried to pass Lewis Hamilton for the lead into turn one. Unfortunately for Hulkenberg, though, he got a little bobble under braking, which caused him to slide into Hamilton. The contact ended Hamilton's race while Hulkenberg got going again, but he received a drive through penalty and would end up finishing fifth. Apart from the one moment, the drive was a brilliant one by Hulkenberg in which he had a Force India in race winning position on pace alone, and given how chaotic the 2012 season was, Hulkenberg winning in a Force Indy to close out the year almost seems like it would have been the perfect ending, but it was not meant to be. 
Obviously, Hulkenberg is returning to Formula 1 with Haas in 2023, so that means he will either have the opportunity to add to his record here, or perhaps he can finally get his elusive first podium to take his name off the list. So, there you have it. Those will be the 10 drivers with the most career laps in the top 3 that have never finished on the podium in their career. Hopefully you enjoyed going through the list and learned a bit about those that never had that podium come their way. Let me know what you think about it and which of these drivers you think were most deserving of a podium in their career. Thanks for watching.